In the 4th century BC, the Greek philosopher Aristotle hypothesized the existence of a southern polar landmass, which he called Antarcticos. And in the 2nd century AD, the Roman mathematician Ptolemy claimed that the Indian Ocean is enclosed by a southern landmass, which he called the Antipodes, and which Macrobius included on his 5th century map of the world. Later, in the 16th century, we find several maps including those of Arontius Phineas, Piri Rees, Ortelius, and Gerardo Mercator, which include this mysterious southern landmass, often in an astonishing level of detail. The inclusion of what appears to be Antarctica on 16th century maps is surprising, given that according to our version of history, the continent of Antarctica wasn't discovered until 1820. Intrigued by this mystery, in the 1960s Charles Hapgood, an American professor of history, sent two of these maps to the United States Air Force for analysis. This is what they had to say. Dear Professor Hapgood, Your request for evaluation of certain unusual features of the Piri Rees world map of 1513 by this organisation has been reviewed. The claim that the lower part of the map portrays the Princess Martha coast of Queen Maudland Antarctica and the Palmer Peninsula is reasonable. We find this is the most logical and in all probability the correct interpretation of the map. The geographical detail shown in the lower part of the map agrees very remarkably with the results of the seismic profile made across the top of the ice cap by the Swedish-British Antarctic Expedition of 1949. This indicates the coastline had been mapped before it was covered by the ice cap. The ice cap in this region is now about a mile thick. We have no idea how the data on this map can be reconciled with the supposed state of geographical knowledge in 1513. Given that the northern coastline of Antarctica has been under ice for at least the last 6,000 years, the implication of these 16th century maps depicting the subglacial topography is astounding. It suggests that someone with the advanced scientific skills required for seafaring and sophisticated cartography was surveying the Antarctic coastline prior to the 4th millennium BC and that records of this knowledge were used by latter-day cartographers to create their composite maps. This idea flies in the face of our current historical narrative, which maintains that there were no civilizations prior to the 4th millennium BC, and certainly none capable of advanced seafaring and map-making. Critics of this idea claim that the Piri Reis map actually reflects the coast of South America, not Antarctica. But the high degree of irregularity of the coastline depicted by Piri Reis would indicate that these two representations are of incommensurate scale and consequently are most likely not depictions of the same landform. Furthermore, as previously stated, the Piri Reis map is not the only 16th century map to accurately depict Antarctica. According to the United States Air Force, the accuracy of the Arontius Phineas map suggests beyond a doubt that it was also compiled from accurate source maps of Antarctica. While there are discrepancies between these 16th century maps, this is hardly surprising given that they are composites made from fragmentary evidence of varying quality. However, what is surprising is that despite the paucity of their source material, these maps clearly depict Antarctica with an accuracy that is too great to be simply due to chance. To quote Captain Lorenzo W. Burroughs of the United States Air Force in a letter he wrote to Charles Hapgood in 1961, We are convinced that the findings made by you and your associates are valid. They raise fundamental questions affecting geology and ancient history, questions that certainly require further investigation. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.